extra media. What? And and he's on a Mac. And we're on live. <laughs> I, I love the chatter going in. <laughs> oh, good. oh man. Um. So it, so when I edit this, is that going to be the first thing we hear? Is <laughs> and he's on a Mac anyway. He's on, he's on a Mac anyway. Uh oh. <laughs> we have a reverb. Who's oh, Ryan? Um, hey guys, uh, welcome back to another episode of Biblical Chili. Uh, this is Tom in the driver's seat for the first time, and so anything that goes wrong from this point out is uh, Justin's fault because he's not here. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! So uh, tonight we have a, a really special uh, episode tonight because we're joined with a fellow podcaster, uh, Neil Matthews from Other People's Shoes Podcast. Hey, uh, thanks for joining us tonight, Neil. Yeah, guys, thanks for having me. I'm, I'm super excited to be here. Uh, it is a little weird being on the interview side rather than the host side. Uh, I'm not going to lie, I like being the host better than the interviewer or so, <laughs> or interviewee, I guess it would be the right word. You'll get to talk this as much, though, I'm sure. <laughs> Fair <laughs> enough. I, I'm looking forward to it. I've, I've got a little bit of what you guys do, and, and to be honest with you, I'm, I'm pretty excited to be here today, so. Well, thank you. Um, so, uh, what, what, how long have you been podcasting for? That's a great question. So, I have been podcasting um, a little over a year now. I'm going to take my glasses off, so less glare, hopefully. But I've been podcasting. We started in 2019, so we just celebrated our year, uh, obviously, in 2020. And then uh, till now, so what, year and a half or so? Yep. But production-wise, we're coming up on uh, almost... Uh, almost two years because we, we started production in early 2019. So yeah. Cool. 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 Um, well then um, what we, how we normally start it is we go around and tell everybody who they're listening to. And so this is Tom. This is Israel. This is Justin. This is Sully. This is Wayne. And uh, we'll go ahead and get, get this kicked off with a word of prayer. Uh, Wayne, you want to lead us? Sure. Feel like I need to take off my hat. Dear God, we are truly thankful to be together. Uh, we're thankful for this new friend, Neil. Um, Lord, we just pray that you bless the show that he has. All of us have listened, and and we are blessed uh, by the the interviewing and the uh, testimonies that are shared. Lord, I just pray that you'd bless this evening that we have together uh, and this friendship as we go into the, in the future and into this evening. In Jesus' name, we pray these things. Amen. 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 By the way, Wayne, if you want, I, I have an extra hat if you're interested. I do like North Carolina. Look, don't get me wrong. And you know what? Can you imagine Chris Weber, every time they start an interview, they ask him if he still has time out? <laughs> so so somebody asked me once if if I could have anyone on my show, who would it be? Uh, Weber is probably on that list somewhere. But um but I don't think I would talk about the interview or the, the timeout during the interview. No, that would, would probably only last a couple seconds. Yeah, it, well, that's true. <laughs> he kind of gets tired of answering that question, so that's why I say that. I, you know, be original, find something else to talk to him about. But anyway. Right. That's funny. Um, so um, you've been doing this for about a year and a half, you said. Um, a year and a half. got you into it? Uh, that's a great story too. So my wife, I blame her. Uh, <laughs> it's the woman you gave me, God, right? <laughs> um, but uh, I, I went through a change in our church leadership structure. Uh, a friend of mine was was doing youth ministry with me and he stepped away. And in that process, our church kind of went through this, as I said, restructuring. And I, I really wasn't in love with the restructuring. Um, nothing against the leadership. You know, I just thought we should go in one way and the leadership said, no, we're, we're going to go this way. We feel God's telling us to. And, and I was like, okay, well, I just don't see how I fit into this new, you know, new dynamic. And so I stepped away, which was painful and, and tough. But at the same time, I think where God shuts a door, I think he, he truly opens a window. And this was the window. Um, I uh, didn't know anything about podcasting when my wife said, I think you should start a podcast. Didn't know what to buy. Didn't know what to get. Didn't know even how to get on iTunes. I knew you had to be on iTunes. That was kind of the, the, the number one thing. And uh, so then after that, I just uh, just figured it out, watched a ton of YouTube videos. 
And then uh, I didn't even know there was this thing called Facebook groups that, you know, that tells you how, how out of it I was, but I joined uh, the Christian podcasters uh, association group. And then from there I joined in into rocket where I am now. And uh, you know, I've met a lot of obviously amazing people along the way. And uh, for me, you know, podcasting has now become part of my rhythm and uh, my cadence of my week and uh, just, just a lot of fun. So yeah, that's, that's kind of the shorter version of it, I guess you could say. Hey, Justin, you had your hand up there. Would you have something to say? I was going to say that, you know what, that sounds exactly like the biblical chili testimony because <laughs> we li we literally had like a Tom's like, Hey, you guys want to do a Bible study? We'll do it in front of Mike's. You know what? We'll try to put it on a podcast. We're like, we had no idea. I think, I don't even think, I think we recorded what one or two episodes before we thought, you know what, why don't we put this out? Like, <laughs> Yeah. Don't, by the way, you guys watching or listening, don't look at the early ones. <laughs> look at our episodes at October on. Okay. Right. Go yeah. there. <laughs> Talk about that. And and I know your man, Scott, uh, went through our whole category, which to me was, was phenomenal. Uh, next week, we'll have 80 episodes, which to me is kind of an achievement. We're kind of excited about that, obviously. But uh, to me, to go back and listen to early stuff, you know, I, I heard an interview done by Toby Mac and somebody asked him that, you know, hey, do you ever go back and listen to new thing or free at last? And he just kind of laughed. He's like, no, not really, you know, because it's just not where I am anymore. And and to think back to where we started, I say we because um, I'm blessed to have an executive producer. His name's Garrett. He couldn't join us tonight. But, uh, you know, Garrett and I do the show together. Garrett does a lot of the behind the scenes that nobody is ever going to see. Uh, he does all of our show notes and uh, he has probably the most important job of all, which is keeping me in line and keeping me, you know, going forward. I'm pretty driven already, but he, you know, I get these wild, crazy ideas. I'm a runner. So I'll go out and run, you know, three, four miles sometimes and I'll come back with this. Okay, we need to do, you know, whatever. And he's like, whoa, 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 how are, <laughs> how are we going to do that? And I'm like, oh yeah, that's, that's a good point. So he kind of brings me back to reality in a, in a very uh, good way, in a very biblical way. So we all need guys like that in our lives. Uh, right, Justin? <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, the, I'm, I'm a dreamer myself. And so uh, that, that's where a lot of our, hey, let's let's do an audio drama. Let, let, we have enough guys here. We can do voices, right? And then Justin got a crash course in editing our very first audio drama, which uh, for, uh, I think it was a, a 20, a 15-minute 15, a 15 audio drama. It took him like three hours or something like that to edit. And he was like, we have to get better at this. Otherwise, we're not doing this again. <laughs> yeah, I remember when we first started too. Uh, I had a youth kid that uh, that has worked for the news station here locally, and I I had no idea how to edit audio, none whatsoever. Never never even knew what Audacity was or GarageBand or any of those things. And and I tried to edit my first episode that we called it the pilot. I'm a TV guy by nature, so that's why we called it the pilot. But you know, I tried to edit that thing, and I I think I spent like six hours on. It. I'm like. I'm out. <laughs> so, you know, this guy came along, his name's Gary and, uh, you know, I paid him 20 bucks an episode and, and, you know, it was great. I, I could write, con you know, make content, send it to him and, and he would get it back to us and, and it was just working out really well. And then I blame those idiots at road, uh, road of course is a mic company. I'm using a, a, a procaster, but they came out with this roadcaster pro, which is, which is what we use and, and what makes these really cool. Right. Cool sound effect, right? Um, when I tell a bad joke, um, but uh, but you know, for me, it, it was a it was an investment. It is it is not a cheap investment, but I knew for myself, I had to invest in myself first, right? Before I could really ever ask someone to invest in me, um, I had to invest in myself. I had to kind of say, okay, hey, I'm if I'm going to do this, let's do it well. And so we went out and bought the Rodecaster Pro and. Haven't looked back and it multi tracks, it does all kinds of cool stuff, obviously, as you guys have seen, and and has made podcasting just a dream uh ease. And so Gary, we, you know, uh nicely, you know, ended our relationship, but he's still a good kid. We we still love him and I think he still listens from time to time. And and when I run into editing hiccups, he'll he'll jump in if I need him to. So very cool, very cool. Um your podcast is called Other People's Shoes. Uh, where where did you get that that um, title from? Other people's shoes. 
Well, I'm a, I'm obsessed with shoes. Uh, for those who are fans of the show, you probably know this. Uh, I have upwards of 50 pairs of shoes. Um, I'm currently looking at just in the studio where I currently sit. Uh, there's probably like six pairs just running around, and then there's there's of course one behind me, which kind of has a cool story. So um, that's where it came from. Um, I really want a perspective. My wife kept giving me the word perspective. She goes, you know, if you do the show, you really need to talk about perspective. And, and I've always been a big fan of empathy and really trying to understand where someone's coming from. I think that just goes back to, you know, my years of being in sales and, and other stuff that I've been involved in. And, and so I thought, okay, well, you know, we, we all know the mantra, right? When you walk a mile and someone else's shoes, you know, you, you kind of know how they're coming from or where they're coming from. And so that's kind of where that comes from. And then the story with these shoes in particular, um, when I was making my graphic, which again, had no idea what I was doing, but I made this, you know, graphic in Canva and it kind of maybe looks like, if you look at it, it looks like a pair of Vans. I mean, I'm not saying they are Vans. I'm not endorsed by Vans, but they might, if you squint really close, <laughs> right? There you go. Yeah. And so, um, so <laughs> well, that's actually the one brand I don't own, believe it or not, Justin is uh, case Swiss. I don't own any case Swiss. So, but anyway, so, um, I was on eBay one night and I, I found these vans and they were used and I was trying to find a used pair of shoes because I wanted someone else's shoes. And so I actually wore, wear these uh, predominantly on, on interview days or on Wednesdays when the show comes out. And, uh, so I quite literally have someone else's shoes. So <laughs> nice. uh, a cool story on that. Nice. Yeah. Very cool. So, um, there's a game. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm jumping questions here. You have 80 episodes, um, which, you know, you have so many awesome guests. Um, if you had to pick one that's had like the most, impact on you and your life and how you live it uh which, which one do you think that would be uh, add on to this question also go ahead, go ahead i want to hear the follow-up too what do you got what's the most difficult one okay also, to add on to his question yeah. so uh that is actually the worst question in my mind to ask a podcaster uh, <laughs> so it's okay you guys um I don't know if any of you guys have kids, but I look at every episode like a kid. Uh, I'm pretty fortunate. I only have one kid, so it's easy to pick that one, right? I love that one the best because it's the only one, right? So, but for me, you know, I look at the episodes like they're children. And so um, it's hard to say I love one more than another, but probably the hardest one, that's actually probably easier to answer. Uh, the hardest one is called Darkness. I think it was our season three episode one i'm testing my memory which is bad i should know them all by memory right um but it's called darkness and i sat with actually a former youth girl and she tells about her marriage and then her divorce and then her husband who was also in our youth group who i know very well who are, did know very well uh took his life uh, because of suicide and just her journey out of that uh was so powerful and so impacting it it kind of it took me back. So that's that's probably the hardest episode to sit through, but probably still one of my favorites would have to be we sat down with a gentleman that uh, did the Forrest Gump route across the United States. Uh, that was fun. Rob Pope. He actually has a podcast now, so shout out to Rob Pope. If you'll ever see this, I don't know. But um, that was fun. That was more of a fun episode. He has some crazy, as you can only imagine, right? Running across the United States, you're going to have some stories. He has some crazy stories. He had a playlist for every day he was out there. And so I picked like random days on his uh, playlist and he would tell me what song song of the day that he had. And uh, so that was kind of cool to, to hear how he had a, <clears throat> excuse me, a different song of the day for every every uh, day he was out there. So that was that was a fun episode. But there have been so many. Um, there's just there's just so many. It's hard to choose just, you know, one or two. But but that would that would probably be the top two that jump out there. Um, we have a question here, um, for you from Justin, the Bible, what size shoe do you wear and what style is your favorite? <laughs> oh, <I know. laughs> That's our classic question, uh, that we open the show up with, with every guest, but uh, apparently recently we, we got some kickback or some feedback on that and pushback would be a good word too. Um, so to answer your question, uh, 
I wear a 10 and a half to an 11 and my favorite pair, I could probably grab them because they're in here and they're, these are them. Th those are my favorites. Those are Jordan 11s, in case anyone was wondering. <laughs> yes, I know those. those are the unicorn shoes, as I call them. So I set. I say, Sully, did you have one? Oh, sorry. sorry. He's Go ahead. If you had a question, nope. you had your hand up. Oh, I did a while back. Oh, okay. <laughs> Maybe I'm getting the five minute delay, guys. <laughs> <laughs> There's a. Um, um, a game that you play at yes. the, the end of your shows. Uh, it's called the, the, the Game of Senses. Uh, yeah, we. What is it? How, 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 did, how did it come about? So we we uh, we play a game called Senseless, and uh, so it's just kind of this senseless kind of game. Uh, I was trying to figure out a creative way to end the show. Um, I don't even know how it came about, but I, I probably was out on a run one day, and I thought, how am I going to kind of you know wrap things up and. And if, if we've dealt with something really hard or challenging or, or maybe even heart wrenching, right. We haven't always played it, but when it's more of a lighthearted episode or more of a, you know, kind of a, okay, how do we transition from what they were just saying to, to maybe them promoting themselves or, cause we always give people an opportunity to, you know, share what's going on or maybe if they have a book, talk about that, you know, how people can get it, whatever. So I just wanted kind of a, a transition. And so, I don't know. I just thought games were fun and being an old youth guy myself, I love games. And so I just came up with senseless. And so we, we take a die and uh, there are five senses, of course. And then we have six as the wild card. And so, yeah, it's uh, it's kind of a fun game to, to end it. So do you guys want to play? I do. Okay. You want me? <laughs> so here's the cup. This is actually the cup that we use on the show. And there is, as you can tell. Yeah. You Your see. biggest fan wants to uh, wants to play the game. Who wants to play the game? I do. Scott does? Okay. So, Scott, we're playing for you. All right. So, All right. here we go. We're going to roll on your behalf because you're not in Oregon. Mm -hmm. Ooh, you got number four. Four. Which means I got to look at my notes. So, uh, number four is this. What is your uh, favorite sound or noise that you love to hear? Ooh. It would have to be the ringing of freedom <laughs> or a firearm going off. Okay. In other words. All right. That's the nice. ring of freedom, huh? All right. <laughs> nice. Okay. All right. There you go. And again, I, I never know when anyone's going to answer. And so uh, that's the best part of it. It's kind of just, like I said, just really senseless. It's just fun. Uh, we did have a guest. I took it out. So I won't, I won't reveal the identity of said guest, but. Uh, they did ask me, wait, we have five senses. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I do may or may not allude to that a lot when I play the game. Like we've said it a couple of times recently, like, Hey, just so you know, you, you do know we have five senses and most everybody's like, yeah, of course I do. Well, there was a time somebody didn't. So. <laughs> I feel like when the one guy actually got six and you're like, Oh, we're going to play with the sixth sense today. Do you see dead people? <laughs> 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 oh no! <laughs> oh, I said God. that. I I don't recall saying that, but I'm going to take your word for it. <laughs> episode one, I think, or season one, episode three, I do believe. <laughs> Neil, this guy has total recall. I was just going to say. Be careful, be careful what you say. So, so that's funny because Garrett and I have talked about how we're going to wrap up this this year's shows, and so we thought about doing a trivia game with with the whole you know seasons and and everything. So, Scott, we may have to call you in to be the like, third Jeopardy contestant, right? That would be fun. Do you want to maybe do that? Oh, I would love that. That'd okay. be great. We'll we'll All look right. at that up for you because because Garrett wants to put me on the 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 Jeopardy hot seat, so that'll be fun. Yeah, Justin, you had your hand up. Okay, I just so this is kind of a question for everybody uh, in the group because I know Neil, you've kind of answered this a little bit, like about the your favorite episode. Now I have not been through every single episode. Uh, I'm the editor for Biblical Chili, so <laughs> we'll leave it at that. And so I have I have listened to several of them though, and I can honestly say, if I can answer this question first, my favorite episode 
episode, and maybe, I hope you remember this one because this, this was impactful for me. It was the one called Pain and Perseverance. Oh, yeah. I do remember that one. And we, we kind of did talk about this. So we kind of did talk about this a lot. So what what Neil does is he actually interviews people and literally jumps into their shoes and gets their full testimony and, and their experiences, just so you know, just in case there's somebody out there without full clarification. And that was impactful for me because – it was about a, a lady and her husband that she said she had basically several female conditions, diseases, and she was basically in constant pain or, or a discomfort all the time. And it was a very big struggle for her to even have a kid. And just, I mean, just to hear a couple go through that. And in this, in today's, I guess in today's society, in today's environment, they're still together. They're still happily married. They still have a wonderful child. They're, they're still, I mean, they're still connected as a couple, but on the spiritual side, they're still, they're not out there blaming God for all of this stuff happening. They know we live in a fallen world. And I just, and that was really impactful because a lot of us, when, once we hit those hard times, you know, it's, it's, it's like, it's like, we want to blame God, but at the same time, God's saying, yeah, go ahead. You know what? I can take it. I can take it. Once you're done, you know, uh, unloading on me, just be willing to listen right afterward, you know? <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, and going back to that, so that came in our perseverance series. Uh, we did the whole, you know, season on perseverance. And so, uh, as a podcaster and, and probably much as you guys know, finding guests is, is a challenge. It really is. Uh, you want to obviously find somebody that's going to bring value to the show, perhaps, uh, maybe not. I don't know. <laughs> But I would think so. Well, we, we, you're honestly our first like real like oh. li at least the live cast guest. All right, fair enough. Never forget um, but you. we have right. We have had brother Mike. He was an yeah. other guest on our podcast yeah. himself. Um, yeah. Well, I'll just tell you going forward <clears throat> that finding people is 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 generally pretty tough. At least for me, it is. Uh, maybe others don't struggle with that, but for me, it always is. And so I literally jumped into iTunes one day uh, back when it was was one category, not you know podcast. Uh, so that's how long ago it was. But anyway, I, I jumped into Apple's podcast uh, section and I just typed in perseverance and they jumped up. They were like right at the top, you know, obviously because perseverance is in their name and uh, didn't know these people before I talked to them, um, you know, jumped on their website, um, found them, reached out to them, sent them, oh, you know, cold emails, so to speak. And they're in Florida, which I was so new in even doing remote interviews, right? Phone interviews that I was like, I'm not even sure this is going to work. I don't even know this technology. I mean, we were still young relatively in technology as far as, you know, how are we going to get them in? And uh, it worked out obviously. And great couple. The thing of the little nuance to that is that um, the husband was just as vulnerable as his wife. You know, and to me, yeah. that, that that's what made the episode as well is we had two, two very unique perspectives. And to me, that, that bring, that brought so much value to that specific episode. So I'm glad you listened to that one. Thanks. Thanks for that. So, so what about you, Sully? Was there one that, that really stands out to you? Cause I know you, you sounds like you've listened to the most out of all of us, man. Honestly, it has to be emptiness in season one where he interviews one of his coworkers. Yeah. Yeah, uh, Uriah is uh, is still a good friend of mine, a uh, fan of the show, as far as I know. And, um, you know, we were just, we started talking one day and and I was actually trying to reach out to him through Jesus, right? Discipleship, you know, trying to trying to share the gospel with him. And uh, I just said, hey, man, I'm, I'm doing this podcast. What do you think? Would you come on and talk about some struggles that you've had? And, and we had a lot of conversations leading up to that episode. You know, we joked before we started recording tonight that all the cool stuff happens right before you start recording and not ne necessarily while you're recording. That happened with us as well. Um, but we tried to tried our best to to um, to bring all that back to him. But but man, he has been through some stuff and and I feel bad for him just some stuff. And, and yeah, that was a tough episode as well. It was the first real hard episode I think I had because that was our first season. You know, I was like, man, I, I didn't know what I was going to get. And, and, you know, that's the best part about doing the show. Right. I, I was actually thinking either between label and on um, season one, that and emptiness. Yeah. Because those were both, I felt were your hardest episodes. The label was actually really good. You had a label one and label two. Right. But the second one I felt was your little hardest because you brought up a trigger word 
to the other person. And I was right. like, Ooh, yeah. It's kind of interesting. Yeah. Uh, and another so, question for you. Go ahead. Yeah, man. Um, with your, because you say the fact that you're dyslexic and all this other yeah. stuff, how hard is it for you to actually figure this stuff out? So the technology, that's a great question. Uh, probably. <laughs> wow. Let me think about that for a second. Um, so probably the technology side is pretty easy. It really is. Uh, I'm kind of a tech nerd in a lot of respects. Um, <laughs> My brother. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> brother got another mother. Um, but when it comes to the writing, right, when it comes to the show notes, that's why Garrett has, has complimented me so well. Um, when it comes to, you know, corresponding with guests, man, I have to read an email and, and thank God for the ability to like have programs that read stuff back to you. Right. My, uh, I know you guys aren't Mac guys, so all right, whatever, but I can get literally uh, shift Z, which by the way is, is the shortcut uh, hot key for me. I, I created it. And so you have to like, you know, do a capital Z, then you're kind of in trouble. But anyway, if I do shift Z, uh, it reads it back to me. And so if I can hear it, I can go, Oh, okay. There's, there's where I'm making my mistakes or, Oh, that didn't sound right. Let me go ahead and fix that. That has been the hardest part really is because I don't want to, you know, send a document to somebody or an email to somebody. And they're like, what, who, who wrote this? Like a 12 year old, little five year old little kid, you know, I don't want, I don't want to be embarrassed in that way. Right. And so, you know, there've been multiple times, even on social media, right. Where I've, where I've had to like go back and like, see a post when it goes live and I'm like, Oh my God, I spelled that word wrong. Or, oh, that doesn't even make sense. Like no wonder nobody's commenting on that. They're like, what are you trying to say here? Do I need a decoder ring from captain America or something? I, don't <laughs> I believe it's captain crunch that had to decoder ring. Thank yeah. you very much. Sorry. I'm bad. I'm bad. I'm bad. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. So, so today, <laughs> So today, Tom, you you said we were going to be talking about honor. Can you launch us off with that? Um, almost. We're almost there. I'm getting to the okay. segue. <laughs> um, your most recent um episode, the one that just released, um, it, it, it perfect timing too. This is uh the week the the couple days before the Fourth of July weekend, and uh, your last your last episode, you had uh Mike. He was he's a Marine, and uh. I, great story um wayne and i actually listened to it at my place before we came over here to to uh, the the basement studio <laughs> and um and he, just a powerful story um there was three things in there that caught my attention like uh i love phrases so i get i hear a catchy phrase i'm like ooh, shiny object but um no atheist in a foxhole the search for honor and his importance of identity now um do you want to give us a little bit of uh, uh, I know that you don't want to take away from the episode, but I would love for you to give a cool teaser into what this episode was and, and um, we'll share, we'll, um, we'll share it again. We already have the episode posted on our page, but we'll share it again here in our comments so that people that are watching this and are interested in it uh, can go ahead and give it a listen. Um, tell us a little bit about that podcast. Yeah. So first off, um, I, I'm usually so far behind on the timeliness of, of of events that are going on, right? I mean, it's just it just happens that that I just I think oh after the fact, right? Oh, it's Father's Day. I should have maybe had something about Father's Day, or hey, oh, it's Mother's Day. I should have we should have done something about Mother's Day. Well, this time I was actually like thinking ahead, like hey, the Fourth of July is coming. Um, I want to have an episode that centers around the military. Uh, why I'm passionate about that. My dad is a former Marine. I grew up uh, on a military base before I moved to Oregon. I was born on a military base in this little place called Camp Lejeune. Maybe you've heard of it, North Carolina, yeah, in Jacksonville, Semper Fi. So um, I really, I actually had some intention of sitting with my father. And I, sorry, I tried sorry. I tried repeatedly to sit with my dad because you talk about this list of people, right. That you'd want to have on. And my dad has been at the top of that list for a long time because I, I he's not in poor health or anything like that, but I just know that when he's gone, I don't know what I'm going to have left to remember him by. Right. Uh, I had a pretty tough childhood with him. I was, a, I was a pretty bad kid. 
um, adolescent also, you know, as I grew up, I was just really mean and I was angry for a long time. So anyway, that just kind of gives a little backstory of my dad and I. And so I tried to ask him to come on and do this. And, you know, every attempt was no, no, no. I want questions ahead of time. And I was like, I don't do that. <laughs> I don't have the questions ahead of time. Yeah. Most of the time I don't even write questions. Um, dyslexic thing. <laughs> Um, but for me, when I, when I got an opportunity to sit with Mike and, and that worked out so amazingly well, that was a God ordained thing. I, I truly believe because I met him through someone else, my sister, and then through another friend from church. And then another friend that I used to work with actually Gene, who was on our, our very first episode, first real episode. Um, Gene actually works with Mike and, and, um, Gene's like, you got to interview this guy. And I'm like, okay, set it up, make it happen. And so I had to work through someone else to get to him, which I hate, by the way. <laughs> I want to go right direct path, right? I want an easy path to get to him. And so um, so Mike is, it, we sit with him. I go out to his ranch, no idea where I'm going, by the way, driving out in the middle of nowhere in Oregon, which is kind of scary. But as I get out there, I realize that this dude is is not like anybody I've ever met before. And we start talking again pre-show and I'm like, okay, save some of this because I, I want to use some of this, right? As it always happens. But but Mike, Mike to me is what it's like to be a Marine, but not be so into being a Marine that he forgot who he was outside of being a Marine. Because I've met so many Marines through the years that, man, that's, that's their whole identity. That's who they are. That's all they're ever going to be, right? Mike is not like that at all. And uh, I think if you've ever had a negative experience with a Marine, uh, you know, you've seen depictions of a Marine in, in Hollywood. Mike is the complete opposite of that. And, and you talk about honor, you talk about integrity. I didn't know what to call it, but his word, you said it, uh, Thomas, you know, he kept using that word honor, right? He kept using that word, you know, identity. And, and we kind of had moved away from that. And so I was like the search for honor. I thought that was so appropriate. And, uh, and I, I that wasn't me. I, I believe that was a Holy spirit moment of what to call it. Cause I do struggle with that sometimes like, okay, what am I going to call this? What am I going to name this child? Right. It's tough. Right. So, so anyway, uh, I'm just, I'm, I'm privileged with it by the way. Uh, just on a side note, numbers wise, and I, and I don't care about numbers. I really don't, but I look at them from time to time just to see this show has already been downloaded over 102 times, which nice. for, in a two day period is pretty fantastic. So we're, we're pretty excited about that and we're celebrating that. So, right. Great job. Great job. Um, man, the, um, that, that, that search for honor, that, that importance of identity that just, um, kind of stuck in my head. And what we'd like to do in our show here is, uh, normally it's a, a open table round Robin where we just talk about, um, a question. And so I think, I think that the, the question I want to open up to us guys is, uh, it's honor. Um, what, what advice or, uh, to us, what, what, uh, does honor mean and, and biblically related? Um, how can that help with, especially a, a new believer or even their, their, uh, the importance of identity in that honor. I know that uh, some of the popular honor phrases is honor your father and your mother, but uh, what other ways reach out to you that uh, either invokes a question for uh, for the clarity or something that just uh, would, would mean a lot to help somebody in their walk? Well, I, I'll jump in. I'll just jump in real quick. Um, I was looking at the word honor. I, I, I listened to your show today. I was reading on some things yesterday. So my favorite show so far is the one you did this week. It's fresh Thank in my you. mind. I Thank loved you. it. Thank but, you. But I like to know definitions of what words mean. I mean, when right. someone says honor, I mean, what does that really mean? It right. means great respect. That was the, the definition that I pulled out of that. And That's there's awesome. a lot of people that we come uh, through our lives, we meet them and we have great respect for them. And Neil, I can tell you, I, I mean, I, I want to honor you because this show was amazing and it made me think Thanks. so many things, so many special people that have come through my life. Some, I mean, people that have um, served this country. Uh, I, I, I was thinking about my brothers who served 23 years. Uh, my father-in-law served in the Marines, baby. And I can't wait to tell him right now. I can't wait to tell him about this episode. He's going to love it. That's awesome. He's absolutely love it. Um, all the guys that I served with in the Air Force laid under the plane wings with while the Marines did the work. 
You know what I'm saying? Honor, great respect. Um, and if I was talking to a new believer, I would be telling them right now, listen, look for these people that you admire the most. And I know I've said this before, and you guys may remember this. Look for those people. Find them. Talk to them. Honor them. Respect them. Learn from them. Uh, and this, these are all things that were sparked from that, uh, that episode that you just did. Uh, I, I, I want to honor you because I think it was amazing. And I think what you do is truly incredible the way you ask the questions. Do you even think about those questions? I don't think you do. I think they just come. No. Uh, so I'm, I mean, I'm going to let you talk for a second because I could go on forever. <laughs> well, well, first off, Wayne, um, I, I just don't even know what to say to that. I'm, I'm very humbled by by your feedback. And uh, thank you. Thank you. It doesn't even seem adequate, but but I do. Thank you. I, I, I value you. And I, 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 I just, that's awesome. Uh, you never know, right? You never know when you put out an episode, what it's going to do to somebody, what the impact's going to be. You know, I mean, I, I hope it, I hope it hits home. I mean, obviously that's why I'm doing it. Right. I, I wanted to bring not only honor your words, um, but I wanted to, I want to showcase the guest. I feel personally, and this is the personal conviction, not only of me, but of the show, I believe people have value. And I think right now, especially in the culture and the and the climate and the season, whatever it may be that we're in, whatever this normal is, um, we're losing that. We're forgetting about that. And if I can, in my own little way, bring respect and honor to the guests that we have on, man, I am all about that. It, it doesn't have to showcase like, look what Neil did. You know, look at the amazing stuff I'm doing. I I could care less about that. I could fade to the back and and let them sh be showcased and spotlighted. Um, I know in the chat, somebody asked is, is, you know, is Mike a speaker? He seems really polished. Uh, I think that's just him. I, I don't know if he's a, I know he's, uh, I don't want to say practice, but I know he's been interviewed by a number of places and people. So, you know, when you do enough interviews, you get pretty good at speaking. Um, I know they're doing a lot with their three chord ranch, um, where they're trying to help out veterans to me. If you guys can go highlight that, maybe check that out. Uh, to me, that's awesome. That's noble work um, that they're doing. But outside of that, man, I, 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 I'm humbled every week I sit with somebody. And, uh, you know, we have a couple of new shows coming up in, in, in this month, not only this month, but in August that, man, I am, I cannot wait to release them because I'm so excited about what, what God has opened for us and the doors that he's opened for us. And, and I guess that's the key I would say is, we're just walking through where he tells us to walk through. We're knocking on the doors that he tells us to knock on. And, uh, and we're not going to stop. I have no intention of stopping. Uh, we will continue to sit with anybody that allows us in our, in their shoes. So mm -hmm. nice. yeah, just, just one more, just a follow up. The thing for me is I admire when someone finds their passion and they go with it and they trust God to, to lead them and go through it. Um, and, and get, getting back to Mike, just for a second, yeah, he was all about his belief in Jesus, but yet he was willing to die to sacrifice himself as a Marine. I know. I mean, it was incredible just to listen to it. It was incredible. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. I'm looking forward. I don't know if I'll be as bad as Sully here, but I'm gonna listen to some more. <laughs> well, I, I want to encourage you if I can. Uh just just anyone who's listening, we um the first not that our July uh lineup isn't isn't as good, uh, because I think it is. But I, but I'm just going to tell you right now, one, the one that's coming that, that, um, that probably has rocked my world the most, which I feel weird talking about something that, that hasn't even calendar wise happened yet, but we have recorded it. Uh, it's the first week in August. I, I'm just going to leave it at that. So people can go, you know, maybe set a calendar reminder, whatever first week in August, that first Wednesday, uh, is probably by far is going to be my favorite episode. I think just because of everything that was talked about and how, powerful our guest really moved me so just a little tease something to something to maybe keep you warm while while you uh, get through these july uh wednesdays so you're already on his calendar <laughs> <laughs> go ahead justin uh, we're talking about honor i mean we we haven't really defined it a whole lot so i'm, I'm one of those guys that let's go let's go ahead and pull it out see what scripture has to say about it yeah, and uh, a couple of things that that I kind of pulled up when it comes to specifically honor uh, in Scripture is Proverbs 
Uh, so I have Proverbs 15.33 and Proverbs 26.1. So let me just read 15.33. Uh, I'll start with 32 here. It says, he who is he who disdains instruction despises his own soul, but he who heeds rebuke gets understanding. And this is 33. The fear of the Lord is the instruction of wisdom. And then it says, and before honor is humility, which I think is telling because appropriate, I think appropriate honor is you have to humble yourself. And I know in that, um, in that episode that you had with Mike and I were, we're still going on the same episode, which that's, I think that's cool. Uh, he talked about something like you asked the question, uh, something to the effect of, so what if somebody comes up to you and says, well, you know, you're just brainwashed or, you know, people are telling you this, or you're just going to be this because you're, you're in the military type of thing, basically, or right. you're a Marine. You drank the and, okay. I even made a reference to Kool-Aid being drunk. Right. Yeah. Kool-Aid being drunk. Right. Yeah. And then, but it was awesome. I think his response was awesome because he said, no, I just humbled myself. I believe he actually used the word humbled. And he said, I, I humbled myself to what the Marine teach. And that humility allowed him to step into that position as a Marine, as that identity held him. Uh, and, and I think that's awesome because that uh, and I think the scripture kind of ties into that perfectly because uh, if we, I think the same thing is, is because he brought it up when it came to his walk with Christ. He said, in order to be honored through our Christianity and and to have that honor that, that God, uh, either God is, you know, um, God is being honored through us or, or something to that effect. The, 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 the answer is the same. We, we have to humble ourselves and submit ourselves to the Lord and what the Lord has to say. And uh, the next the next verse I have on honor, it says, as snow in summer and rain in harvest, so honor is not fitting for a fool. And I don't know how well that sets, but I, I thought it was cool. Well, I think that uh, it, like, Neil could play game. crickets. <laughs> yeah, some... <laughs> <laughs> that's really good. <laughs> right, you got to give us that make and model because that's our next investment. Yeah. $600 Roadcaster Pro available yes. now at Tweetwater.com. And I need to, to which is right near, you, end, so, wow. you know, right near you guys. But, but going back to Mike and, and just the whole honor thing too. Um, I've never dedicated an episode to anyone. This was a first. I did dedicate it to my dad. Um, I did burn him a CD, which, you know, I didn't even know you could do that anymore. Uh, <laughs> I actually had to Google how to burn a CD because it's been so out of practice, right? I mean, back then, I used to do them all the time, right? So, but now I'm like, how do you even do that? Can you even do that, right? Um, but I did dedicate it to my dad. And and I don't know if he's listened yet, but he has a copy of it. And I hope he does, but I don't, I don't know. And um, it's still really... Mike's episode obviously means a lot to me because Mike showcased a lot, right? Gave us a lot, showed us honor, you know, demonstrated, you know, Jesus's love was pretty clear with the gospel messages, all that great stuff. Right. But to me, it was still hard because I'm like, I want my dad to hear this and, and people don't know this cause they weren't, you know, obviously on set with us when we were recording, but his final thought, if you go back and listen to that, or when you go and listen to that, hopefully others will listen to his final thought. He dedicated that to my dad and he actually mouthed it to me. Uh, so you, you don't pick it up in the audio, but he said, I want to talk to your dad right now. And so his final thought is directed straight to my father. So, and he doesn't even know my dad, which is cool. So awesome. Yeah. So you talk about honoring. I think that honors obviously not only my father, but but the heavenly father as well. So amen, amen. I want to touch a little bit on the identity, the importance of identity, and how um, how Mike he uh, he talked about how when he got out of the military, he had to figure out who he was. And last night we were on a group talk with everyone from the CPA, and I think that was brought up too about identity, about figuring out who your audience is. If you 
are a Christian who podcasts or you're a, a, a Christian podcast, you know, and figuring out who you are before you can move forward. Um, when, when we translate that into our walk with Christ, um, and this is geared towards our, uh, our our new believers because I remember being in those shoes I, I, and, and being around those peers that, you know, now what? You know, I was young when I came to Christ, but I have known so many unbelievers turned believers that they didn't know what to do next. So how do we uh, uh, tackle this identity now that they have submitted themselves and given their lives to God and they can't go and wear the shoes they used to wear anymore? They have to go and, and, and try out something completely different. Um, does anybody have any uh, uh, advice for them or any uh, scripture that we can and, uh, give to them to, to fall back on to help them when they feel weak? Did you say because they feel weak? Yeah, like we said, like wanting to backslide and those old pair of shoes look really good because I, and I, I just gave my, my life to Christ, but it's so easy. It's just, it's, it's new. It, it's, you know, I, it's, it's not too late to turn back. Right. Right. And those, those backs, those, it's so easy to backslide, especially in, in the climate of today where every, every time you turn on the TV, it's always more anger, more fear, more frustration. Um, where it's so so easy just to go back to the old lifestyle, even though you had that moment. And so I'm just trying to to reach out to those people that um, are are looking at this and going, okay, I'm a Christian, but why now? Because there's just no hope. There's no hope in the world, and they're just so new they don't see that. Go ahead, Neil. Well, I was just thinking of Romans 12 too, which says, you know, do not be conformed by the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. To me, that's what it's about. If I'm really going to take on this new identity, this new pair of shoes, using your words, even though I love it, by the way, so <laughs> we'll go with it. it's easy to talk about shoes, right? But if I'm going to put on this new pair of shoes, I don't know about you guys, but when I do put on a new pair of shoes, which... Happened recently. I did buy some, you know, knockoff Mr. Rogers Sperry shoes. Thank you, eBay. You know, I put those things on, even though, you know, I, I've tried on thousands of shoes probably in my lifetime. When I put those on, I was like, man, I don't know what it is. I just feel like Mr. Rogers all of a sudden. I feel like the essence of the neighborhood, right? But <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Hold on, hold on. Did you do this song like? Throw the shoe into the other I'm, hand. I'm not really good at catching. I'm really good at throwing things, not good at catching things. But I'm trying to find them. Hold on. They're right here. Hold on. Oh, oh, my but if you notice, right, the toe box is, is navy. You can't really maybe see. But then as you go up the shoe, what is that light blue? I don't know what's going on there. But sorry, obsession. But, but I say that because if I'm truly going to, you know, put on these new pair of shoes, this new lifestyle, this new transformation, I, I'm going to need help. I don't know. You know, most of us have kids, right? Imagine our kid trying to tie a pair of shoes. They don't know what they're doing. They just make these knots and they just make it worse, right? They just tie knots on top of knots on top of knots on top of knots. And it's like that. You're never going to get that thing untied. You're never going to get that off. And I think Jesus comes along and says, Hey, you know what? Let's get rid of these knots. Maybe you have a knot of addiction. Okay, that's really hard not to get off, but we're going to get rid of that. Maybe you have a knot of lust, but we're going to get rid of that. Maybe you had a, a lying tongue. We're going to get rid of that. You know, and, and slowly but surely, all of these knots kind of get untied. And then we have this new brand new shoe with, with the laces untied. And it's like, okay, now let me show you how to tie your shoes, right? Whether you loop, swoop, and pull, or whether you go around the bunny ear or the tree, or I don't know all the terminologies, but but I do know that there's like 80 different ways to tie your shoes. I just know that. But Jesus says, no, 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 no. My way is the only way. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Nobody comes to the Father except through me. And so if we really truly believe that, we got to let him tie our shoes. We got to let him equip us. And we got to let him kind of take over us and transform us into this new creation, right? Right. And if we're doing that, right, if we're really seeking after him, if I'm, I'm really seeking after him, I'm going to honor what he says. And I'm going to put people around my life. I'm going to surround myself with great men who are going to call me out on my stuff. 
Yeah, Justin. Uh, I, I'm just going to kind of piggyback off of that. And let's, let's continue the story with what he's talking or continue the conversation with what he's talking about. So he's talking about that help as he's talking about that assistance. Uh, I, I would take it from the, like you're talking about Tom, you were talking about kind of feeling stuck or you want to surrender or give up. And I think the biggest tip when it comes to those type of things with, with a new Christian uh, is, is submitting and understanding the fact that the primary reason that Christ came down here is that he wanted to correct uh, the perspective that the world at that time had of who God is. See, if we could, and this, this is something that was transformation for me is once I understood that everything that God has for me is good, all of a sudden the bad stuff that started happening around me, I, I was able to accept it in perspective and say, okay, wait a minute, let's rethink the situation. Is this, you know, God coming down with some retribution of lightning or is this maybe just, well, we live in a fallen world and maybe bad things happen to good people all the time. And so I guess in, in reference to that, in, in a lot of ways, <laughs> let's go back to the shoe analogy. You know what? Those shoes may feel funny and they may feel tight. Well, maybe you got them on backwards. Or on the wrong feet. Wrong That's feet. what I mean, right? Maybe, maybe, it's impossible. maybe they're on your knees. Yeah, right, like, right. And and I, I guess I just say that because I know I was wearing my shoes on the wrong feet for the longest time, uh, literally and spiritually, where I, I thought Jesus was all about this. And he actually, scripture says he's this. And God is this, you know, this is God's character, not this, you know, formless mass that I've kind of conglomerated together in understanding from my perspective. Because let's face it, uh, the only perspective we have in life is our own. And it's kind of what we're stuck with. So we have to be able to shape it. <laughs> well, and hopefully we're using the Lord to, to help shape that perspective. And I think that's what's so great, right? About sitting with, you know, going back to the show. Sorry, self-plugging the show here, right? <laughs> Sorry. But, but going back to that, right, is, is for me, I think that different perspective, you know, somebody may have a whole different theology than I do. I know we've had a number of people on that don't, you know, necessarily believe in who Jesus is, right? They don't know that he really is the way, the truth, and the life. And there's mm -hmm. no way to the Father except through him, right? There are a lot of people that don't believe that. Now, does that mean that their opinion, their view is now dismissed because they don't follow Jesus? No. It just means that now I need to love them more and be there for them more. And then maybe one day have that conversation with them that says, Hey, this is why I'm different. This is why I choose to see you, who you are and what you are and where you are and love you where you are. Amen. Wow. Go ahead, Sully. Well, uh, this is actually kind of a nice segue into this. The first time I heard the concept of other people's shoes was actually through anger management. So I thought that was pretty funny because it was actually like, that's my true life story. I am a new Christian to this. And I feel the fact that because the fact that I come here every Thursday and hang out with these guys, I feel better about myself. I look at things differently and it's just because they're here. You know, I pray and I do things differently than other people. <clears throat> you know, one of the things that I like about your podcast and you started off at the beginning seasons to actually note the fact that you don't like to label Christianity and I don't like Bible believers. And that's actually yeah. what we're about. We're not, we have a seven day Adventist. We have a couple, what is that word you like to use? Don't say it. Don't say it. Baptist. Um, yeah. Baptist. <laughs> Whoa, Baptist. <laughs> <laughs> and so, you know, it's just, I like the idea of having other people around yeah. to actually help you out. Right. And go with that. Well, the thing I would challenge you on, Sully, is is this, right? <clears throat> this is what I would challenge you on. Is ask yourself, what is it that your life is missing? And I would even ask any any new believer or non-believer that. Uh, the word Christian, by the way, appears three times in scripture. Yes. Three times. That's it. Fact check me if you want, but it's true. Go Google it, whatever. But it really only appears three times. The better question is, is how many times does the word disciple show up in the Bible? Right. It's a lot more free. I'll give you that. Okay. I don't know how many times I haven't gone and looked. Maybe our Baptist friend next to us can tell us, but <laughs> no. sorry, there's a Baptist. Yeah. Friend. 
Yeah. It could be the Michigan thing. It's just, it's, good. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I say that, I say that to you solely because, and I would say that to you, I would say that to anybody if we were face to face, whatever, because to me, the word Christian has been hijacked. Oh yeah. Stolen in a lot of respects. It's been stolen from the culture. We do crazy things in the name. And then we say, Oh, we're Christians. I'm like, stop it. Stop it. I'm a disciple of Jesus. I love him with all my heart, my soul, my mind. I do my very best to follow him in everything I say and do, but I don't do that in the name of Christianity. And that's why, um, Thomas, last night when we were talking about that on, on the Christian podcast group, right? Are you a Christian podcast? People have asked me that. Like, are, is other people's shoes a Christian podcast? We have, you know, little networks of pockets of networks where you can put your show, you know, and and mm -hmm. I'll be honest, I've hit up a couple of Christian, you know, networks, right? To help promote the show because I think the show is important, obviously. Uh, otherwise, why would I be doing it, right? And the very first question everyone always asks anytime I want to put the show on a Christian network, are you a Christian podcast? I don't know how to answer that. Right. So the best answer I usually give is, well, I'm a Christian who's doing a podcast. Does Jesus come into my show? Yes, because Jesus comes with me everywhere because he's in me, right? But do I talk about Jesus? Do I convince people that they need to accept him as their Lord and Savior? No. Is it my job to do that? I don't know. Is it my job to share him? Yes. Is it my job to bring conviction to somebody's heart? No, not my job. Is it my job to judge someone? Also not my job. So that's where I'm at with it. So I don't know if that answers anything, but, or just no, I, more conversation. I don't know, but there's myself. Perfectly. <laughs> hey Wayne, you had your hand up a moment ago. Me? Yeah, that was like five minutes ago. I, I know. I good stuff. Hey, I, I wanted to show you my new shoes too, Mr. Rogers. <laughs> yeah, pretty nice. My, my wife dresses me up. Uh, the, one, one of the things that I was thinking about, and I'm always, I'm, I'm, um, it's something I'm always thinking about in my mind. I remember as a young Christian, not having a clue, yeah, not having a clue. What's the follow up? What's the next thing that I do? I remember I had, I took this girl on to some kind of conference, young people conference, and she got saved. But I was a Christian. I. I had no idea what the next step was for her. Um, I guess this is kind of a gripe. I don't want to. I don't want to gripe, but it is a gripe. I just think the follow up is so necessary to new Christians. The follow up. We need to follow up with them. They and, and they need to also know that they need to seek out mentors. And we've talked about this before. I might be a one track. I'm, Michigan one track mind. It's it's the coach in you, man. It's yeah, the coach. It is, but I just really think that is one of the most important things that we can do for someone who gets saved. Well, Except we, Christ is your personal savior. Someone needs to come alongside of you, but we also need to encourage them to seek out those people. I remember my father-in-law. I talk about my father-in-law all the time because he's been a great mentor to me. He was the one that taught me seek out these men seek out these men that you respect the most take what they have and build it into your lives ask them questions grow with them um but this is i think this is what god wants us to do you talk about being a disciple uh of jesus i think that's what we're supposed to do one of the many things we're supposed to do but seek them out find these things we can't just float there and us as Elders need to recognize that these young people like Sully, who just got saved, need this kind of discipleship. And I love that he's here. This is he's this is his church. Yeah. yeah. This is his church. We are his church. It's not a building. It is a little bit of a basement building, but uh, but this is church for him. And I love that he says that. Uh, and now he's got you. He's never gonna let you go. <laughs> Hey, he could friend me on Facebook. I would, I would take his invitation in August because I won't see okay. it now. But, but I mean, uh, and, and seriously, and, you know, I may laugh and joke and, and have fun because I love to do that. But in all seriousness, I mean, we're talking about eternal things right now, right? But I mean it. If, if I can in any way be of an encourager to somebody, <clears throat> that's my number one spiritual gift, by the way, is encouragement. Um, I didn't get fix it. I wish I could have. Um, I didn't get helps. You know, I wish I could have. Uh, no, God decided to say, nope, you get encouragement. And I'm like, cool. 
you know, I feel like a Care Bear. Like I can't really <laughs> do a lot of cool stuff. I can do the Care Bear stare really good though. But, um, but I mean it to, to me when I think about becoming a new believer and we've had a few in, in my men's group that I'm a part of that ironically meets in, in roughly about an hour from now. Um, for me, the thing I've encouraged our young men to do too, young men and even older men is, is find somebody you admire, right? If there's somebody around you that you're like, man, that, that guy has it going on. That guy knows what he's doing. That guy seems to, to, you know, know Jesus and love Jesus. Go ask him, say, Hey man, can I, can I just follow you around? I know that sounds a little creepy in nowadays, but, but can I just, can I just see what you do? Can I learn what you do? I guarantee there isn't a guy on the planet that'd be like, get away, pound sand. What they're going to be feeling like, Whoa, what do I have to offer? What honor do I have to give going back to our original question? Right. Mm -hmm. What do I, what value do I have to bring to this conversation? But it's this idea that, but to have somebody come alongside of you, man, that, I mean, that's the way, Paul and Timothy did it. I mean, you look throughout scripture, everyone had that kind of person that they were being mentored by and had a mentor E. And, and just like for me, I try to find men in my life too that that can pour into me and then I can take that and then pour it into somebody else because that's the way it should be. And if you're not doing that, you need to ask yourself why. What's the reason why? Yeah, absolutely. Wow. Um I think that's a, a, a great way to, to send this off. Um, normally we'd lead off in prayer. Um, but before we go into prayer, I want to give you the floor again. Uh, talk more about your, your, your show, uh, plug the next episode coming up and then we'll leave off in prayer and then have a great night. Yeah. So, uh, we do have some great episodes coming up in July. Uh, for those that don't know, I'm, I'm shamefully admitting this because I, Again, talk about having a mentor, right? Talking about having that person to pour into you, right? So a guy I respect, uh, he has a very similar podcast. I would consider him a, a mentor in in this journey with me. Uh, he's given me some great insight, some great perspective. His name's Sean McCoy, so shout out to Sean. Uh, he has a, a podcast very similar to ours called Come to the Table. He challenged me to uh, to go a month without social media, which is really hard. And I'm only in day two. <laughs> really hard. So some of you are like, wait a minute, you're on Facebook right now. You're violating that. Well, as long as I'm not commenting or, you know, participating in, you know, likes and checking the likes, that's, that's where it is. Yeah, exactly. So a lot of scrolling happens throughout the day, but, um, but anyway, so I'm off social media right now, but when I come back from social media in August, uh, I'm excited to see, you know, maybe what happens, but, but back to your question. So July, uh, we have coming up for the rest of the month. I'll just run through the list if that's okay. Just yeah. really fast. So uh, Misty Phillip, she is from the Rocket uh, Podcast Community Group. Great uh, lady in, in, in podcasting. If you're interested in learning more about her, listen to her next week. She gives uh, just a, a grace. We're, we're on the search for grace next week. So that's kind of fun. Followed by uh, Vonna Johnson. We were on her podcast uh, a number of uh, uh, weeks back. And so we talked to her just about her kind of life journey. She has a really amazing story about this hidden place in her life that she didn't even know about. And so kind of a cool story about how she found that. So the search for the hidden place, we were calling that. And then we end July with the search for encouragement. We got hooked up with a gentleman out in the New York, Connecticut area that is a motivational speaker. And we get in a really I'm not going to say heated, but a really interesting discussion about the George Floyd situation. He, of course, is African-American, not George Floyd, but our guest is African-American. His name is Michael Arterberry, if I'm saying his name right. I'm really bad with names. Uh, saying names, uh, remembering names, I'm really good at, but reading names, not so good. But uh, but we end with July with him. And then, of course, I'm really excited about 1st of August 1 because I get to come back to social media. But... <laughs> I'm really excited about our guest uh, that's going to happen in August. So um, join us. Uh, banner behind me, OPSpodcast.com is a great place to listen each and every Wednesday. We, of course, are on all the podcast platforms that you're probably familiar with. So there we are. All right, Justin, you want to head us out of here in prayer? And then we'll go around and say our goodbyes, and then we'll go offline. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time we've had together. Holy Spirit, I pray that uh, you'll help bring this to our remembrance when we need it. And I pray also that you'll uh, show us where we need to change and change us, dear Lord. 
Uh, be with us as we end this day. Be with us during this holiday season. Father, be with everyone during this holiday season. Keep them safe. And Father, I pray that even during this time, Lord, that you will uh, come up to the forefront of their minds uh, so that uh, they may honor you. Father, we love you so much and we thank you in your heavenly name. Amen. 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 This has been Tom. This is Justin. This is Neil. And this has been Wayne. And thank you, Neil. Thank you very much. Thank You're you. Welcome, guys. Thank you, guys. It's a pleasure. Appreciate you all. Lord bless you. www.opspodcast.com, guys. Check them out. And have a great weekend. And thank you to all the vets. Amen. <laughs>